Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. Today I want to talk about creating a backup of all the data you have running in Microsoft 365. Because we know that Microsoft is only responsible for keeping that platform online and available, right? So all the services within Microsoft 365, that's the responsible of Microsoft. And all the data you generate and you put in there, that's your responsibility. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are running a Synology uh, solution or a Synology NAS. And the nice thing and the great thing about Synology is they already have a specific package, a specific application on their platform, which you can use to create that backup of all the data in your Microsoft 365 tenant, right? And it doesn't have to cost you any licenses. Of course, there are licensing limitations there. I will leave a link in the description below where you can read all about it. But if you have a Synology NAS running, you can start today by creating a backup solution for that M365 data without buying anything. Now, the nice thing also is that you're in control of the data. It's your data. You're taking that backup and storing it on a place which is safe for you and reachable for you. You're in charge of security now, all right? So. Let's get into it and let me show you how to set up that package, how to set up that application on your Synology NAS and how backup and restore works. Basically, let's get into it. Active backup for Microsoft 365. This is the web page from Synology. You can see how it works and they have uh, a lot of information here about the several services they allow you to backup using that active backup for Microsoft 365. As you can see here, you can take backup of all the mailboxes with Exchange Online. You can uh, take backup of Microsoft Teams, SharePoint Online, and also OneDrive for Business, right? And of course, this is very important. They allow you to take unlimited backups license-free, right? Just like I said, if you have Synology NAS running in your environment, Today, you can start by taking backups of data, taking backups, creating secure and safe backups of data from Microsoft 365. How nice is that, right? There is also a lot of features here. We can go into it, but again, I will leave the description down below so you can see how it's working. And of course, there is a FAQ and or their nest limitations, for example. You can uh, select here, you can click here to check if the, the model of Synology you're running is, um, is capable of running this package, right? And another one as well is, are there any license requirements or maximum account limits? Well, the answer is pretty clear from Synology, no. So there aren't any license requirements or maximum account limits, however, if the number of accounts you want to protect exceeds 500, we recommend reaching out to our sales team for a consultation. And what will happen in that consultation is they will go through your requirements together with the professionals from Synology and make up a plan, take up a, a strategy with you, how to create backups of that large amount of accounts you have. So this is my virtual Synology and I have package center here. And basically what Package Center does, it's, uh, it is allowing you to install several packages and add extra functionality to that Synology NAS you have. That's exactly what we're going to do because Synology have a nice package, active backup for Microsoft 365. Well, the Package Center is basically an, just like an app store, right? So when you open the Package Center, click on all packages and find the active backup for Microsoft 365. Like I said, it's already installed here. So if I click on the install tab, I can see that it's running and I can open it. There are several steps involved for setting up this package and connecting it back to your Microsoft 365 tenant. I will go through the steps together with you guys and show you how to set it up. Now, if we click on open, it will open up Active Backup for Microsoft 365, as you can see here behind the active window, and a wizard will start asking you, what do you want to do? Do you want to create a backup task? This is the option we're looking for basically, or do you want to relink an existing backup task? Well, the relink option is, for example, if you move all your archived backup data from your primary Synology to a new one, to a secondary Synology, and you're um, reinstalling active backup for Microsoft 365 on that new Synology, choose this option to point it to that data you already have. 
we're going to create a backup task and click on Next. When you click on Next, you will be presented with two options. We will leave it at the default, and then there will be a certificate it has to generate. Now, that certificate it will be used for authentication between your Microsoft uh, tenant, your, the Microsoft servers, and your Synology. So we will just create a very long and complex password here. Make sure you write this password down because that certificate is your key in negotiation in authentication between Microsoft Surface and your NAS. So we'll click on Next. It will pop up a window to log into your Microsoft Services. Log in with an admin account. In this uh, case, it's the demo admin account because Synology needs specific permissions in the backend. This is fine. Click on Accept. It looks like everything has been set up successfully in my M365 tenant from a Synology perspective. And it asks me if I want to redirect back to my wizard, basically, because this is the place where my wizard is running. Let's click on Agree. And the window will close. And we are back at connecting to Microsoft 365. As you can see here, it's registering an Azure AD application. This is something it will set up in the back end in your M365 tenant because it needs an AD application to be able to get that data out of your M365 tenant. We'll let it set it uh, set up the Azure AD application and wait for it to finish. And the authentication was successful. So when the authentication is successful, it will tell you also the certificate has been generated and we can download that certificate and keep it in a safe place. Let's do that. Now it will ask me, all right, let's create a backup. Backup YouTube demo. And I will store the backup data in my public folder. The public folder that is just a share on my Synology. This is FileStation. As you can see here in Synology uh, FileStation, I have a public share. In that public share, I will store the backup. Of course, depending on your Synology setup, you can choose another share, which you have uh, set up specific permissions for, and select that share to uh, store that backup. Also, another important one, I will enable Active Backup for Microsoft 365 Portal because I want users to be able to restore data themselves, right? They don't need to reach out to the service desk or to your admins every time they need to restore something, just point them to the portal and they will find uh, how they can restore their own data. So I will enable it this and click on Next. Now, this is a very important one. It will present you with a tenant ID and an application ID. Copy those two over. Just store it on a safe place. And let me do it now. Click on OK. Enable Auto Discovery Services. What it will do, it will automatically take into account all the license accounts you have in M365. You can also let it search for unlicensed accounts within your M365 platform and also external accounts. We will leave this at default. And of course, we have a backup scope. The backup scope is telling Active Backup for Microsoft 365 what does it need to backup? What do you want it to backup, right? So I have selected the new user option, also the new site and the new teams option for the different services I'm using on M365. Of course, this can be different depending on your needs and requirements for your N365 platform. Click on Next. Now I can set up a continuous backup schedule or a manual or a scheduled backup. Well, I will set a schedule for daily and let's set it up for 5.30 in the morning. That's fine. And the retention policy, I will tell it to keep, for example, I need to keep the, the data for a year, for example, then I will say 365 days. All right, click on Next. It will show you a nice summary of the settings. And now I will click on Done. 
it's creating the task and it will automatically ask you, do you want to run that backup now? It's a new task. So the chances that you have a backup for this new task are zero. Do you want to run it now? Let's click on yes and let's see how the backup goes. Now it's running the backup tasks and let's let it finish and dive into the details after that. Now the backup has completed successfully. Well, the first time it runs, it can take some time depending on how many accounts and users you have. Now I can see here that I need to pay attention to apparently one of those accounts, one of those users in my demo account for M365. And I click there, it will pop over to the status page and it will immediately select that user which needs attention. Now, if I click on partially successful here, I will see which of the services were backed up successfully and which of the services for this user need additional attention. Now again, I can click here on partially successful and it will drill down to the log tab and immediately select that user for me. And in the detail log, when I hover with my mouse over it, I can see what's the matter. In this case, it's just a license uh, thing. That's fine. This is just an M365 demo account. So I have limited licenses there. If I want to edit some settings of this backup job, Afterwards, I can click on edit and then I have a nice overview of every setting for this backup task, right? The name, I can change it. Of course, you can see the app credentials for the app it has created in your M365 tenant. Of course, if you go to the users tab, you can select or deselect users you don't want to have in the backup or the different services for a specific user. So as you can see here, it is very granular and very detailed what do you want to backup from M365 for what user or what group, for example, right? If you go to the groups tab, you can see that there are specific groups here and you can select or deselect groups and tell it not to backup a specific group, right? So that's very handy to have. Of course, you have the SharePoint and the team settings as well and the auto discovery setting. The auto discovery setting, like I showed you when setting up that task, it has in the, in the setting now that when I create a new user in M365, it will immediately add that new user to this backup task. I don't have to do anything for it. Of course, you can change these settings according to your needs. Now, if you go back to the user tab, you will see here, update Microsoft 365 user list. So this is very handy if you want, like you created a user just now and you want that user immediately be available here. Well just force the update and it will repopulate this list with every user you have in Microsoft 365. The same goes for the groups, SharePoint, Teams tabs as well. If you go to the policy tab, the policy is where you set the backup policy. You can change the schedule here or change the retention as well. So again, very detailed, very flexible, and it will suit the need for you on how you want to backup that M365 data. Now, if I click on backup overview, I have immediately an overview of what's happening in my backup for uh, the active backup for Microsoft 365. I have an immediate overview of what's the what activities are running. For example, if someone is doing a restore at the moment, um, I can see in the log files what has been done in the recent backup jobs. If I scroll down a little bit lower, you can see how many how much data has been used, how much data has been backed up specifically for every service um, there is. And as you can see here, it's using up one and a half gigabytes of data at the moment. And it will tell you immediately who are, who is uh, which user in your organization, in your M365 organization is using up the most data. It specifies it here very nicely. And if you go on to the bottom and it will tell you how much data is being transferred. Well. The first backup it will run, that's the, it's all the data there is practically in your M365 account. So the first peak here will be very high. And then afterwards, it will be an incremental. So those will be a, a, a lot less. Now, if you click on the log tab, you will see an overview of the log file there. Uh, this is very handy for audit purposes, of course. You can also export the log file and uh, use this in another application. Now, if you click on settings, it will tell you what the concurrent backup limit is. Default, it's 50, a little bit, it depends a little bit on how many backup accounts do you have in your M365 tenant. 
and how many do you want to back up concurrently. Uh, take into account that M365 has some throttling limitations in the API uh, Synology is using. And Synology basically is checking when that throttling expires, it will continue those threads. But again, it can take some time for a backup to finish, especially if it's the first backup and you have a lot of data and a lot of accounts. Well, maybe then it's uh, wiser to split that uh, backup job into different and several parts and keep that uh, backup running and completing successfully before throwing in everything. And then the user delegation part, you can add, add delegations here. That means these users will be able to uh, be a manager of this uh, in the self-service portal, basically, or they will be able to have a granular, more granular role. Now, when creating that backup task, we check that box for self-service restore, right? So if you click on the main menu in your Synology, now you will see that there is an additional icon here. It says active backup for Microsoft 365 portal. This is that self-service portal users can use to restore items themselves. So if I click on there, because I'm already logged into my Synology admin uh, interface as the admin, uh, well, it basically logs me in, in that active backup for Microsoft 365 portal as well as the admin user, as you can see here. Now, I'm in the self-service restore portal, but I because I'm the admin, I can restore items for other users as well. So for example, if I would want to restore mail data for a specific user, I then click on the role and I select a specific user for whom I want to restore some email items, in this case, Megan Bowen, and click on OK. Now, it immediately shows me these are the items in the backup available for this user, right? You can just browse through the mailbox, select items, restore them to the mailbox of that user or to the archive mailbox as well, or export the items as well, right? So this is very handy. and. Because I only have one backup, you can see the timeline here at the bottom. The user is able to choose from, uh, from the, this timeline what is the backup point they want to select and restore from. Because I only have one backup point, right? So I just select that backup point. But if there are more backup points, you would see here more backup points, select the one you need, and immediately you can do restores. Now, if you're using Microsoft 365, and you have a Synology NAS running in your environment, setting up Active Backup for Microsoft 365 is a no-brainer. Set it up and let it take care of that backup. Let it take care for that data you have in Microsoft 365. Keep it on-premise, keep it on your own Synology, be in control of the data and keep it secure. There are a lot of more features in Active Backup for Microsoft 365 from Synology. A lot of those features are enterprise-grade features, just check the description and the link to the website of Synology and see what fits your need, right? Again, it's a no-brainer if you have both things running. If you're using M365, you're using Synology, set it up and let it keep your data safe. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye.